We all know these investors, and perhaps you're among them. People who obsessively check their portfolios. People who buy when they should sell, and sell when they should buy. People who follow the pack on Wall Street, even when it leads them over a cliff. The big question is why? Why do we as investors often make the wrong decisions? In this series, we'll look at the evidence to understand how emotions, psychology, even the wiring in our brains affect our financial decision making. Welcome to your mind and your money. September 2008, Lehman Brothers goes bankrupt. Stocks tank. The global financial system seems on the verge of collapse. Fast forward one year. Investor Susan Abrams sits calmly in her living room. The market has finally begun to recover. But she remembers the pit in her stomach during the crash as her portfolio dropped nearly 30%. You know, I'm not a suicidal person. But yeah, it, it did affect me. Susan was not alone. Countless investors watched a lifetime of savings vanish. Panic was in the air. Some were probably on their roofs, you know. I was not on the roof. I did get nervous. Standard economics assumes that people are cool, calm, and collected. They make logical decisions to maximize their wealth. Princeton psychologist Daniel Kahneman turned that idea on its head. He found that in matters involving risk, people are anything but rational. His work won him a Nobel Prize. If you ask, let's say, Princeton students, uh, how about the gamble where if it shows tails, you lose $10. If it shows heads, you win X dollars. What would X have to be before you like the gamble, before you're willing to take it? They'll want $25. You can do the same thing with their parents and talk of $1,000 or $10,000, and you'll get roughly the same ratio. So that's a very fundamental fact about people, that they're loss averse. That trait, loss aversion, leads people to shy away from good bets. Susan Abrams says that happened to her. After the market crash, her emotions said hunker down. She chose to stay out of the market. I still was nervous, you know. MRI brain scans have taken Dr. Kahneman's insights one step further. Dr. Jonathan Cohen is a brain scientist at Princeton University. He and others have found evidence that emotional mechanisms like loss aversion are hardwired in our brains. Our brains have different kinds of mechanisms, some of which are sort of holdovers from prior times and may still be very useful. With those different mechanisms that serve different sorts of needs, you have the potential for conflict. And it's that conflict between these different mechanisms that may explain our erratic and sometimes seemingly irrational behavior. So if irrational behavior has its roots in the evolution of the brain, how can we overcome our emotions and make sensible investment decisions? Robert Frick of Kiplinger's Personal Finance says advanced planning can help. Well, just recognizing that you're hardwired to do things poorly is a huge step because most people won't admit that to themselves. And then what you need to think of is when I'm in a time of crisis, I'm going to make bad decisions. So I'll do my planning before time of crisis. Abram says once she realized how her emotions were influencing her investing, she was better able to manage them. No, I'm not as crazy as I was, no. In recent years, researchers have begun to unravel the complex connections between your mind and your money. In this series, we'll search for cutting-edge insights that will help make you into a better investor. Dan Gretsch, Nightly Business Report, Princeton, New Jersey.